If you've ever wondered what it looks like behind the scenes to be a full-time business owner, creator, podcaster, entrepreneur, online education, business, and course creator, then you are in luck. I've seen a bunch of these and I've listened to a bunch of these behind the scenes podcasts lately on YouTube. I've watched a lot of videos and I thought, why not do one? Now, today's episode won't have the actual live footage, but I'm working on it. So you're going to get that very soon. If you're interested in my simple weekly routine for productivity, keep listening. Well, hey there, my name is Anne Samoylov and I've been supporting and strategizing online course launches for clients, myself and students for over a decade. And I wanna help you get your big idea out to the world too. Whether you're a coach, an artist, a consultant, or you just have a course you wanna get in front of more of the right people. Well, I welcome you friend to the Fearless Launching Show. Let's get into today's episode. Now, this week, it's kind of funny. (laughs) This was my episode. Actually, I meant to do it last week, which in itself is hilarious. And that doesn't pass my attention. Last week, we were sick in my house and it was not a typical week. In fact, we found out towards the end of the week that we'd been suffering from flu A. You'll still hear me very congested and hopefully I'll be able to get rid of the coughs pretty easily in the descript editing, which is what I use for this podcast. I'll put a link to what I'm talking about down below. So if you're like, what? A script? Sometimes if you've heard the word only once, you're like, what is that word? And said. So go to the comments below and you'll see, or the links below, and you'll see what I'm talking about. Also, side note, I actually had a bunch of things that I was supposed to do, send, prep for this week. And the biggest one was a workshop, a free workshop. And I, it, was pl- it was supposed to happen today at 1 p.m. And guess what? It's not happening now. In fact, I sent an email out over on Saturday, I think, just letting everyone know that it was canceled, being rescheduled. And later in the weekend, I did reschedule it for next week, which also happens to be a non-typical week in terms of my life. And it's going to be spring break here at uh, my kids' school. So... It's, this is not a typical week right now, what I'm currently living, but I am going to share what my typical ideal week is and how often I hit that. How often does that ideal week actually happen? And I used to think, I used to think it was actually funny because I'd get this question all the time for me to share behind the scenes, prepping for a launch. And I'd be like, what do you want to see me sitting at my computer or drinking coffee or pacing back and forth? Because it didn't seem like it would be too interesting. So I decided to just talk through a week. And one of the, by the way, one of the key skills that I really keep coming back to, and this is why I talk about productivity and systems, but one of the key things is being able to build up your stamina for getting things done, learning the thing, the ways that you can get more of the right things done. And so sometimes I'll dive into decision-making, how to be a better decision-maker, because that is one thing you need when you're launching, selling products, and you need to figure out why something is or isn't working, and then replicate that or delete it and try something new. So anyways, oddly enough, I have found myself watching a lot of vlog-style productivity, weekly productivity routine videos in the past couple of months even. But why? Because I immediately feel like I'm actually not so far off from what I should be doing. I just like watching other people be productive. And maybe that has made me productive for the most part, except for this sick week that we just had. And maybe we're still having, to be honest. Like I said, this is a different kind of episode for me because as I'm chatting with you here, I'm also recording some footage that I'm going to share with you in different areas so you can see see what's happening. And I won't be showing my kiddo. But that is a big part of my daily routine because they didn't agree to be on video and they don't love that teenager. And however, you will get a taste of things in terms of the timing on how pickups and other appointments happen during the week. And pretty much the Monday through Friday, there's a very similar pickup kind of rhythm. And this is truly going to be a week in the life of kind of a single mom, of a teen, and also just an entrepreneur. 
well, it's my life. So hopefully you enjoy it. So here's a little bit about my every single morning. I hit the alarm clock or pick up the phone at around 6.30. I get up, I meditate, I stretch. I usually spend some time quietly because I know no one's getting up at that time except my cat, who's already probably busy patting at my face. And then breakfast happens, coffee happens, and then we're off to the races in terms of getting ready for school. If you're interested in how that is going, if you want to hear more about raising a teen as an entrepreneur, definitely let me know because I probably won't be able to be as open as I can be with entrepreneurial stuff, but I will certainly give you some insights into that because it is challenging, not only because I'm a single mom, but because I also have various things happening every single day. And it's not like I have just one place I go to every day. So pretty much I am done and have done the school drop off by about 9.05 or 9.10 or so. And then I drive to whatever the next appointment or thing that I need to get to is. And then pickup is in the afternoon at about like from three to four is usually when I like start doing like that whole process. And at four is when school gets out or close to four, right before four. And after that, Honestly, I usually don't do any work in the evenings unless it's a specific client who I'm helping with their program, which I am a mentor in a few different programs. And so I generally ask for late night time to see if anybody needs any support or anything like that with content, with business strategy, with whatever they need. But here's what my day to day looks like and my ideal day. And I've talked about this before, but I like to work in themes, okay? And every day I like to have a simple theme for myself to get my day focused and started and just at least have a little bit of a, a border or some sort of guidelines, margins for the day. And so Monday is my money day, my money review. So I'm doing a lot of bills, personal and business-wise. I'm also always looking at trying to make reels, reaching out to clients and different people that I need to reach out to on Voxer. And in the meantime as well, I try to stay active because menopause. (laughs) So I'm usually walking in place as I'm working or depending on if I have meetings out and about, I am definitely walking around. I'm trying to be as active as possible. Tuesdays is usually my content creation day, though this week, but this week I'm recording on Monday just because I missed the full week. So I want to get this episode out as soon as possible, but that's when I'm writing or recording the podcast or both. And Wednesday is a short day of the week because school pickup is about an hour early based on their schedule. And honestly, this day goes by in a flash, so I tend to not schedule too much I do a bunch of quick errands out and I have some standing appointments on Wednesdays that I handle just because I know it's not going to be a long day. And in all honesty, I have to be on the road by two in order to just get in school lineup. One thing I want to pop in here about about this week, these times during the week, is you're going to see a lot of the fact that this, sometimes my life is not my own. In fact, a lot of my life I feel isn't truly free to fluctuate. I work within the boundaries of when Mila has to go to school and I and when she's home because I made that commitment a long time ago that I was going to be here with her and for her. Now, of course, teenager, so video games are happening and all that stuff and Mila does not want to hang out with me, <laughs> so it's fine. I, but honestly, I can't just veer out of any of these main routines of pickups and drop offs and doctor's appointments because if I do, I honestly then just get behind and get more stressed. And I wasn't stressed this past week, like I said, because I was sick, but I do get stressed. And so I have to use the same tools. I have to eat the same things at the same time, or at least somewhat the same time just to keep as many things as no-brainer as possible. This is something that I've talked about, and I know 
Marie Forleo also talks about in Time Genius is this whole cognitive um, load and that you want as few decisions as possible during your day. You want as many automatic, routine kind of based things because those don't really take that fuel away from you, right? So just know that right now, at least for the next couple of years during high school, my life is not just mine. And I'm okay with that. So Thursday is podcast release day in theory. So I like to post a semi-related reel, send out my newsletter, and I'm usually at the computer a lot that day, just getting everything going, testing everything, updating my YouTube description and making sure thumbnails look good and updating the thumbnail if I don't like it. I am mostly focused on the podcast on Thursdays. Friday is my catch-up day. And again, I have some standing appointments for the first part of the day right after I drop off at school. I try to make it as go with the flow as possible on that day. But I always carve out some time to catch up and get things going for the next week. And honestly, I used to be a batcher. I talk about batching a lot and I do think it can be powerful. And I have something I'm going to need to batch for coming up in the future. There are some changes that are happening in our home, and I want to make sure that I am prepared for that. So the best way I can prepare for that is to batch record at least maybe a month of episodes. So that's when I batch now, is if something else is coming up. I love to catch up on shooting video for reels for the podcast as I'm walking around, as I'm driving, as I'm doing other things. So that's that. And Fridays are pretty, pretty good. Weekends are a bit more fluid. Again, nothing has been the same (laughs) this past week. And but weekends are a bit more fluid. However, something that has become a regular kind of installation every couple of weeks is a mastermind call that I have with these three amazing business owners on Saturday mornings every other week. And what's great is that we connect on Marco Polo if we can't make it. So we're still having that check-in kind of, even when we don't have the check-in. And last couple of weeks, I've just been sick on the Saturday that we were going to meet. So it was canceled because of me. But generally, I just do whatever I want to do. And I try to do some work because it's always like I can trick myself into it and it never feels like work. So I like to review my big wall calendar, see where I am with things. I like to do some housework. And that's it. Anyway, so that's a little slice of life. I do keep it very, very simple. One of the main practices that keeps me doing this every single week is to have a refocus session with myself. And if you haven't heard any of season six's refocus sessions, just click on, if you're in the YouTube channel, just click on podcast and there's a few different playlists in there. Look at season six. I was doing two episodes a week, which was cray, but If you can look, you'll see every other one should be a refocus session. And essentially what I do on Sundays is just say, what am I focused on this week? And I just try to put something in for each day that is a themed day. What's important for the money day? What's important for the content day? What's important for this? How did I get ahead on this somehow this week? I honestly keep it simple. Themes and my refocus session and obviously just giving myself the space to be sick when I need to. Now, I know this episode wasn't long, it wasn't like all about launch strategy, but it is about launch strategy in that if you can get yourself to a place where you are systematizing, even if it's like an easy system for you to follow through on, but if you can find a system that works for you to really get your work done every week, then you're putting yourself in, you're almost like training yourself like an athlete would. You're training yourself to get things done, to look at what's most important, to look at what comes next. And you're still going to have to make that plan, create that launch map. But once you have that launch map, then you have everything you need to then create this same sort of system. And maybe what I'll have to do is create more of a, this is like your generic, simple productivity week. But what about a launch productivity week? What is that going to look like? How do we get ourselves truly ready for that? Because launches of all kinds, and we're still having people do this. And I want to change this dialogue 
Launch is just releasing something. You can release an automated funnel. So stop using the word launch to mean this bucket, like this overarching live launch experience. Launch is Launch just means you're putting it out to the world. You put freebies out to the world. You put funnels out to the world. You put new services out to the world. You put new offers out to the world. Yes, you do that with every single type of sales system. And I know that it's an easy, don't launch, do this instead. No, but you're still going to have to launch. Okay, I'm going to get off that soapbox. No more, no soapboxes today, I swear. However, if you can get yourself to a place where you're refocusing every Sunday or during a launch, maybe a couple times a week, then you're going to be in a really good shape when it comes to almost your launch doors opening or like whatever that thing is that you're releasing, where you're going to be like, wow, I actually did complete everything. I'm not behind. I have never done this where I actually finished everything that I said I wanted to do. That is actually one of the biggest challenges of people who've ever, who've worked with me before they've joined, let's say, Fearless Launching or my incubator program or just worked with me, is that they had all these big ideas, but they couldn't get them done. So it's not about not having a good strategy. It's just about actually finishing all the parts to the strategy that you wanted to create in the first place. So this does matter. So start caring about your weeks and how you're showing up for them. And even when you have an off week, or two weeks like I've had because of illness, you're still going to be in good shape for whatever it is you're working towards. I hope you've enjoyed this episode. I know it was a quick one. And I want to, again, thank you for listening to the Fearless Launching Show. Next week, we'll be talking about list building. List building, my friends. This is a good one. So stay tuned and have a great rest of your week. <laughs>